In this first example, I've got a denominator of a four and of an eight. So we're gonna clear denominators by first looking for their lowest common denominator. This is a number that both four and eight goes into, and we can find it by listing their multiples. Or you could maybe guess, if you're listing the multiples, you're gonna go ahead and count by fours. Four times one is four, four times two is eight. Then we've got 12, 16, and so on. And then we're also gonna find multiples of eight. So that would be eight times one is eight, eight times two is 16, and so on. Well, we already have the one in common, and that is the eight. So eight is our least common denominator. And I wanna multiply everything in this equation by eight. Here's what that looks like. I'm gonna multiply eight times that first term, which is a 1 4 x and then my minus sign, and then I'm gonna multiply eight times that one, so eight times one. On the other side of the equation, I need to multiply by eight also to keep this equation balanced. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. So this is eight times my one eighth x. As I'm multiplying by eight, I'm actually thinking of this as multiplying by the fraction eight over one. That helps me keep the fractions lined up. I don't really need it there in the middle one. Now let's cancel, this is the best part. So four goes into eight and it leaves me with a two. On the other side of the equation, I can cancel eight divided by eight and it leaves me with a one x. So I end up with this super nice looking equation. I have two times x minus eight is equal to one x. I'm just gonna write that as an x. No fractions, and this is where we can start solving. Let's put our x's on the right, and let's put our numbers on the left because we are almost there. All I need to do for this is to move that 2x over, and we're moving it by undoing. It's a positive 2x, so to move it or to get rid of it from that side, I'm gonna subtract the 2x. So I end up with, let's go ahead and do the math here, um, negative eight is left by itself on the left side, and on the other side, I have one minus 2x. One minus 2 is negative 1. So I get a negative 1x and I'm ready for that last step which is to multiply or divide. I need to divide off that negative 1. Divide the negative 1, divide the negative 1, and I have 8 is equal to x. Now with every equation we can check the solution. Let me bring our original equation back up here and we're going to replace the x's with our solution 8. Let's do the math, I can cancel the four, I can cancel the eight, and I'm left with two minus one equals one, which is totally true. So our solution is eight. In this next one, we again have fractions and we really wanna clear those denominators, but we need to start by simplifying this right-hand side first. So let's go ahead and do this distribution, moving that four inside. On the left-hand side, I'm just gonna go ahead and write what I have, one-fourth y plus one-third. On the other side, I'm gonna multiply that four through. So I end up with four times the three-fourths y, three-fourths y, minus the four times the three, so four times three. Now as I'm simplifying, I can cancel the fours in that first fraction on the right side. I haven't touched the left-hand side at all. So let me just rewrite this, and then I think we're gonna be ready to clear those denominators. So on the other side, I canceled those fours and I have just the three times y left. And then I've got the minus four times three, which is gonna be a minus 12. Now we're ready to clear denominators and I've got denominators of a four and a three. Both are on that left-hand side. So I want a number that both four and three divide into. You can get there by guessing and running through numbers in your head, and you can also do this using multiples. So the multiples of three are counting by three, three, nine, 12, 15, and so on. Multiples of our other denominator four, I've got four, eight, 12, and so on. Do you see that common denominator? We need to multiply everybody here by a 12. 
Now we're ready to multiply every single term on either side of the equation by our 12. So I've got 12 times that first term and then times 12, I'm just gonna sneak it in here, 12 times the 1 third. And then I've got 12 times the 3y and then on the end, 12 times 12. Now again, you can think of those as fractions when you're multiplying as fractions so that you remember how to cancel. If you're doing it right, you're gonna cancel all of those denominators. And I think we're doing pretty good. Um, four goes into 12, and that's gonna leave me with a three over here in front of the Y. Three goes into 12, and this is getting really messy, and I get a four over here. So let me write what I've got so far. I have the three Y plus the three canceled with the 12 and I'm left with a four. So plus four is equal to, now on the right hand side, 12 times three is 36y minus 12 times 12, that is 144. Now we need numbers on one side and our variables on the other side and it truly doesn't matter which side you pick. I am going to just to pick one and I think I'm gonna end up with positive numbers if I do it this way. I'm gonna let my variables be on the right hand side and numbers on the left. You can definitely do this the other way. I'm gonna start by moving that 3y. So I need to subtract a 3y from both sides. So minus 3y minus 3 y. If I do the math here, I end up with the three y's going away and I have four is equal to 36 minus three. That's going to be 33 y minus 144. All I've got left is to move that 144 to the other side. Now it's being subtracted so I want to undo that by adding 144 to both sides. So plus 144. Okay, let's go ahead and do the math, and we are so close to our answer. I've got 148 on one side is equal to 33y, and the 144s cancel. I've got one last step, and that's to divide everybody by 33. There is nothing to reduce here, so our answer is y equals 148 divided by 33. Here comes our next example. What would you do first? I'm really hoping that you said simplify because that's exactly what we wanna do. Now you could clear denominators at this point, but it gets tricky with those parentheses. So I would absolutely simplify this first. And we need to multiply that 1 fourth into the parentheses. As I do that, I get 1 fourth times a minus 1 fourth times three, and you can think of that as a three over one, nothing to do on the other side. So I get three tenths a minus one fifth. I have just a tiny bit of cleaning up to do. So that gives me one fourth a minus multiplying this next one straight across. Three times one is three, four times one is four. And again, I haven't changed anything on that other side. Three tenths a minus one fifth. Now that we're here, we are ready to clear those denominators. And you'll notice that we've got a 4, a 10, and a 5. So we need multiples of 4, multiples of 5, and multiples of 10. Or you can think through what number does 4, 5, and 10 all go into and that number happens to be 20. Let's multiply everything that we see by that least common denominator of 20. So that means I've got a 20 times the 1 fourth a, a 20 times the 3 fourths, just kind of squeezing it in here, a 20 times the 3 tenths a, and a 20 times the 1 fifth. Lots of things that I can cancel, and as I'm canceling, I'm gonna go ahead and write down what I've got below, because it's getting messy already. 4 goes into 25 times, so I've got a 5a. For the next one, bring that negative down. 4 goes into 25 times, but I need to multiply 3 times 5. So that's going to be 15 is equal to 10 goes into 22 times. So I've got 3 times 2, which is 6, 
And then 5 goes into 20 4 times negative 1 times 4. Oh, I forgot my a. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Now we're ready to solve this much simpler equation. And it's going to work again to have our variable terms on the right-hand side because of that 6a and our numbers on the left. The very first thing that I want to do is to bring this variable term 5a over to the other side. And I'm going to do that by subtracting since it's positive to start. So I've got minus 5a minus 5a and you can see why I chose that right hand side for my variables. The 5a's go away and I've got negative 15 is equal to 6 minus 5 is 1. So it's equal to 1a minus 4. My very last step is to add a 4 on both sides. So add that 4, add that 4, and we have got our answer. Negative 15 plus 4 is negative 11. And on the other side, our 4s cancel, and negative 11 is equal to A. You guys are doing fantastic. I've got another video for you here on special case equations where your solution is either nothing or all real numbers. Thanks so much for watching.